Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about one more concept in operating system that is a threat models. So in our previous sessions, we have discussed about threats. What is meant by a threat? What is meant by a process? And also we have seen the difference between a process and threat. And in our previous session, we have discussed about a two different types of threats that is a user level and a kernel level threats. Now we have to go through about these threat models. So here are two questions. What is a threat model and what's the reason behind to go to these threat models? Right? So what is this threat models means mapping of user level threats. to kernel level threats is called thread models that means so by using these thread models we are going to map the user level threats to kernel level threats so here the second question is so what is the reason why we are mapping the user level threats to the kernel level threats because so as we discussed in our previous session the user level threads were created by user and not recognized not recognized by operating system right whereas the kernel level threads created by operating system and recognized okay and recognized because they are created right recognized so, whatever it may be, either process or a thread, it should be get executed by the process itself, right? So, without recognizing these user level threads, how these threads will be executed by the CPU? So, that's why we are going to map these user level threads to the kernel level threads in order to get executed by the CPU. So, here the CPU is a processor right so everything should be executed by the processor so only the processor can recognize the kernel level threads they can't recognize the user level threads so that's why we have to map the user level threads to the kernel level threads in order to execute these user level threads right and this process this process this mapping process is called a thread models okay and these kernels the kernels which are mapped, which are mapped to user level are known as virtual processors, virtual processors, right? Actually, these kernels are being uh, created by the operating system and we are mapping the user level threads to these kernels. So, these kernels we call it as a virtual processors, right? So these user level threads are being executed by the virtual processors. Now, there are three different thread models to map user level threads to kernel level threads or to execute the user level threads by the processor. The first model, many to one, many to one and one to one and many to many. So simply we can call it as M to one and this is one to one and this is M to N. M to N. So these are the three different models which are used to map the user level threads to kernel level threads. So we will see one by one coming to the many to one. So in this many to one, so there are di different threads, right? So thread one, thread two, thread three, right? So this is a user space, user space, and this one will be the kernel space, kernel space. Let it be some K1. So these threads, are being mapped to a single kernel. All these threads will be mapped to the single kernel. 
So this type of uh, model we call it as a many to one. That means many user level threads will be mapped to the single kernel. So everything is fine, but there is a disadvantage of using this model. What is the disadvantage? If any one of the thread, if any one of the thread is being waiting for any IO operation and if it is uh, moving towards the blocking state, immediately the complete process will be in the blocking state. So no other thread will be executed by the kernel because all the, all the three threads are being mapped to the kernel. So if any one is in a blocking state, so the remaining threads have to wait until the block, I mean the, the thread which is being blocked should be being executed until it completes its execution, right? That's the main drawback because all the threads mapping towards the same kernel itself. So in order to overcome this one, okay, in order to overcome this one, we are moving on with one to one. So in this model, one thread will be associated with a one kernel, right? So here we are having a multiple virtual processors. So, so hope you understood the disadvantage of using the first model that is many to one. So if any one, uh, uh, so uh, mapping all the threads to the single kernel. So only if, if any one of the thread is in blocking state. So all the remaining threads have to be in waiting state until it completes its execution because all have mapped to the same kernel. And now see. The next one, one to one. That means in order to overcome that one, so we are mapping each and every thread. Each and every thread are mapped to each and every kernel. Each and every kernel. Right? So every thread will be mapped to each and every kernel. So the problem has been solved. If, if T1, if T1 is in a blocking state for waiting for any IO operation, immediately T2 can't check, can't wait. It need not to wait, right? So T2 will be executed by the another virtual processor. So K2, right? Kernel. And similarly, T3 will be executed with one more kernel, right? So it, it, it overcomes the disadvantage of first model that is many to one. But here in this model, again, we are having some disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? So the number of threads are being increased automatically. The number of kernels are also being yeah, created, right? So we have to create a more number of kernels. So if a process is having some 10 threads, so there should be 10 kernels because one thread will be associated with only one kernel. So that is the main drawback because so creating more number of kernels automatically reduces the performance of processor. So the kernel will be created by the CPU by using some system calls, right? So creating more kernels automatically reduces the performance of the processor. So that is the main drawback. So it overcomes the drawback of first model. That means the waiting state, right? But here there is a one more drawback that is more number of we have to create a more number of virtual processes. so in order to overcome the second disadvantage i mean that's a disadvantage of second model we are moving with the third one which is an efficient one here the the, the uh, mapping is between many to many so m number of threads will be associated with n number of kernels so there will be a pool of kernels for example there are 10 threads so we can create a five kernels and 10 threads will be mapped to the five kernels, right? So we need not create a 10 kernels each for one thread, right? So here, if 10 kernels, if 10 threads are there, we can create some less than n kernels, right? So if there are m threads, then automatically we can create, we can create less than m kernels less than m kernels so automatically that avoids the disadvantage of first one that means if any one of the process is in a waiting state automatically the next process can continue its execution with uh, associating with the another kernel and the second one 
So it is not necessary to create a more number of kernels. Some sort of kernels can be used and we can assign all the threads to those kernels itself. Right? So these two disadvantages of both the models can be overcome in this third model. So this will be an efficient one. So here let it be so k1 k2 okay so so like this we can assign the kernels okay we can map the threads to the kernels so it is not necessary to map every thread to every kernel right so this is how the kernel i mean user level threads are being executed by the operating system first they have to be mapped to the kernel kernel threads and then the operating system will execute the kernel threads because the operating system will not recognize the user level threads so operating system will only recognize the kernel level threads so that's why we are mapping uh, user level threads to the kernel level threads and this process of mapping is called modal model so we are having the three models many to one one to one and many to many right so let's stop here hope you understood this one and if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching Thank you very much.